Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. La ilaha illa Allah, Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar, wa lillahi alhamd. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. La ilaha illa Allah, Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar, wa lillahi alhamd. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. La ilaha illa Allah, Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar, wa lillahi alhamd. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. لا إله إلا الله والله أكبر الله أكبر ولله الحمد الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله والله أكبر الله أكبر ولله الحمد الحمد لله الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلله فلا هادي له ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن سيدنا ونبينا ومولانا محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله تعالى على خير خلقه محمد وآله وأصحابه أجمعين أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل إن صلاتي ونسكي ومحياي ومماتي لله رب العالمين لا شريك له وبذلك أمرت وأنا أول المسلمين صدق الله مولانا العظيم وصدق رسوله النبي الكريم ونحن على ذلك من الشاهدين والشاكرين والحمد لله رب العالمين <coughs> Respected elders, my dear brothers and sisters in Islam, according to the Islamic calendar, this month is Zul Hijjah and 10th of Zul Hijjah we have gathered here which is called Yawm al Nahr. And Zul Hijjah is the last month of the calendar. Now we say 1444 Hijri. And after this month, we will be saying 1445 Hijri. 
and this month has got many virtues and many importance in Islam. On one date of this month, Mu'mineen from all over the world, they get together in Maidan Arafat and perform Hajj. And that is on 9th of Zul Hijjah, according to the moon sighting in Saudi Arabia. 9th of Zul Hijjah is Yom Arafat. But for those who are outside Hijaz, it is 9th of Zul Hijjah, it's not Yom Arafat. And when we say that it is virtuous to fast on that day, that means those who are in Saudi Arabia, of course, they will be fasting according to the moon sighting there. And those who are outside Saudi Arabia, they will be fasting according to their moon sighting, 9th of Zul Hijjah. We were talking about Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salam because this day we have gathered. Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salam has gone through so many tests. Today we will be talking about the biggest test he went through and that is sacrificing his own son But before we talk about, we should know that Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salam, his title was Abu al-Arab. And the reason he was Abu al-Arab, because he left one of his son in Mecca, Hijaz. And from the progeny of Sayyidina Ismail alayhi salam was an Arab, so he was called Abu al-Arab. Another title of Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salam was that he was Abu al-Anbiya. He was the father of the prophets. And that was because he left one son in Mecca and one son he left in Sham, and that is Hazrat Ishaq salam. From the progeny of Sayyidina Ishaq salam, there were about 24,000 prophets came in that progeny. Out of 124,000, 24,000 were only in the family of Sayyidina Ishaq That was, he was, that's why he was given a title, Abu al-Anbiya. And all the test he has gone through is just, represents the love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Today is Eid Qurban. In India, Pakistan, they call it Badi Eid. Namkeen Eid means saltish Eid. And some people say Bakra Eid. It is from Bakr, Bakr Eid. But I think the, the best name of this day is Eid al-Adha. Adha comes from Udhiyya. And Udhiyya means sacrifice, qurban. 
Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. He was sitting in a gathering. Sahaba asked, "Ma hadhi al adahi ya Rasulullah? What is this sacrifice we do? What is it?" Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "Sunnatu abikum Ibrahim." This is the sunnah of Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salam who is your father in Arab where Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam started giving da'wah Arab used to say every time Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam will give message of the Islam they will say our forefathers have been doing this so that's why prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam said sunnat abikum ibrahim and before we talk about the qurban and sacrifice we should know what qurban is The best model of love is Qurban. There was one Arif. He has written one incident that one artist was drawing some vines and petals and flowers. Very beautifully, he was drawing those. designs calligraphy and one aunt came and saw and she said what a beautiful nakshun nigar beautiful designs another aunt comes and she says no these are not beautiful actually it is the it was the pen which created all these lines and another arif ant comes and she says it is neither the calligraphy is beautiful nor it is pen it is the hand which held that pen and draw, drew this and then another arif and comes and she says that no it is neither any or any one of them it is the khaliq of the one who created the artist so the ashiq the one who loves for allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he looks allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in everything Khalifa Harun al-Rashid very famous name you must have heard once he announced that come to my palace and anything you want i will be giving it to you because today i am very generous ask me anything and i will accept your application people came and picked up everything and they said can we take this can we take that so the kanis the maid she was standing there and khalifa said to her why don't you ask something you this is the time if you want anything just ask that kanis and maid came and she put the hand on the head of khalifa and she said i want this subhanallah the one who have got khalifa that means she has got the kingdom the materialistic thing this maid said that you people are stupid you are looking for those things I am looking for the king so that I can get the kingdom. Ashik things of 
ది ఫైనల్ డెస్టినేషన్ సైదన ఇబ్రాహీం అలై సలాం వాజ్ ఇన్ లవ్ ఆఫ్ అల్లా సుబ్హాన వ తఆలా ఎన్ అంబియా ఇక్రామ్ అలై ముస్సలాత్ వ సలాం ఇన్ देयर లైఫ్ ఎనీ టైం ఇట్ ఇస్ ది ఆర్డర్ ఇస్ గివెన్ బై అల్లా సుబ్హాన వ తఆలా देयर ఇస్ నో క్వశ్చన్ ఆస్ సైదన మూసా అలై సలాం వెన్ హి కేమ్ టు ది వాటర్ देयर వాజ్ నో వే అవుట్ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asked him to just hit the asa. He could have said, Ya Allah, we are running away from Fir'aun. We have got water in front of us. If this asa would have been hit, it would have been hit on the head of Fir'aun. You are asking me to hit on the water. No, he didn't ask any question. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered and he hit the asa and he saw that water was open and they all went through. Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salam had love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He did not go in any questions. Let me tell you this love to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that gives you the freedom that gives you the tawakkal if you understand your khaliq and if you understand your creator and if you have de- depend on allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that means you are free now there is no fear and these anbiya ikram alaihim salatu was salam they were so much depending on allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that today we gathered here just think he is about to give sacrifice of his son and one principle if i say this is the universal principle i wouldn't be wrong in order to get some achievement or in order to get success you have to lose something you have to sacrifice something those people who are not ready to sacrifice or no are not ready to lose anything i tell you they don't even deserve to live Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala once we are worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then we should know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will never think anything negative for us every hukm of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala comes we should just take it we should act upon it Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salam time is not much but when sayyidina ibrahim alayhi salam after all those ibtila and imtihan and all those tests he had gone through what was it he left his family then he confronted he was thrown in the fire then he left his town he left his watan migrated and now his age is getting 84 or above 80 no aulad he used to make dua to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that ya allah give me aulad from salihin and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala of course if allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would not listen to sayyidina ibrahim alayhi salam just think where we stand allah subhanahu wa ta'ala responded 
and while he was going to Egypt, the king of Egypt gave his daughter, Hazrat Hajar alayhi salam, and he made nikah with her, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave one son, and that is Sayyidina Ismail alayhi salam. Hadrat Ibrahim alayhi salam had Sarah, but there was no awlad from Sarah. It is but natural that if Hajar has given one son to Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salam, Sarah got feeling that I am some kind of inferior or something. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salam to move and to take Hajar and this child to one land which is Zar'azi Zar'in Banjar what is barren land Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salam with Jibreel alayhi salam he goes there and he leaves at one place where there is no life at all. Not a single even petal of any leaf. And then Jibreel alayhi salam said that this is where they will stay. Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salam prepared some kind of hut for Hadrat Hajar and son Ismail. And just imagine Sayyidina Ismail is it's just milk feeding. That's what his age. And Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salam leaves some dates and some water and he starts walking. Hadrat Hajar comes and she says, where are you leaving us? There is no life here. Sayyidina Ibrahim, he does not answer. He keeps walking. She runs and she says, listen to me, where are you leaving us? Then she says herself, she thinks, she says, is this any commandment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which you are act acting upon? Is it? Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salam nods in affirmative. Then she says, okay, if this is the commandment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I trust that I will not be wasted. You can go. Subhanallah. Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salam leaves. And at one place he makes dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Ya Allah make this their life easy. Ya Allah give love in the hearts of people for them so that they can have fruits. And he is praying. Can you imagine that the child a born a not very old and he's leaving them alone? Just what would be his feelings? Of course, because he is Nabi, his feelings would be that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's order. I am happy in that. But if we think if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala orders us to leave our child anywhere, would we be doing it? That means our iman is weak. That means we are not ready to come up to the mark on our sharia, our ahkam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave them zamzam. And the story is long. 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave them zamzam and when wherever there is water you will see the birds flying there. And when the Jurhum Kabila saw that the birds are flying, they started coming towards Kaaba. And that's how the population started. Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salam used to come from Sham and visit them time to time. Now there is a time that Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salam, Sayyidina Ismail alayhi salam became maybe 12, 13 years of age. Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salam, he sees in the dream that he is slaughtering his son. He asks his son, this is what I have been dreaming. Sayyidina Ismail says that, Abu, you are Nabi. You are Nabi. If you see any dream, that is the wahi from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants. Go ahead. Do it and you will find me from Sabirin. He did not say that you will find me Sabir. If he would have said Sabir, that means he is trying to give his quality. No. That means there have been Sabirin in this world and I would be one of them. You will find me from Sabirin. Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salam ask Hajar to get him ready. And he prepares everything and knife and whatever, the tools he could take. And he take, sets off for Mina. There are three places that shaitan comes. First he says to Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salam, after that much age, didn't you ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give you son? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you son. On one dream you are killing him. Shaitan said that. Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salam did not pay any attention to him. Then he comes to Hajar. And he says, do you know where he is taking your son? He is going to kill him. Hadrat Hajar said, if this is the hukum of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I would not listen to you. To me, muqaddam is the hukum of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then he comes to Sayyidina Ismail alayhi salam and he says that your father is taking you and he is, do you know? He says, yes. My father has got hukum from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then they go. It is written that Sayyidina Ismail alayhi salam requested to Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salam that before you do this, please put some strap around my eyes. He says, why? He says, if you look into my eyes, you might be shaky. I don't want you to look at my eyes. And then another request he said that put me on my forehead. If you put me on my forehead, you will not see my face and you will do your work. Subhanallah. Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salam, as soon as he puts him on, the, on his forehead, and he is trying to cut that the knife will not work. And he is getting so upset. I sharpened the knife and everything. Why it is not cutting? Let me tell you one thing here that we see that fire burns. It burns with the hukum of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
if the knife cuts it cuts with the hukum of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not give hukum thing will not work <coughs> sayyidina ismail said dad look it might be the other way around your knife and he checks and he puts his whole pressure and say allahu akbar allahu akbar sayyidina jibril alayhi salam immediately comes and he says la ilaha illallah wallahu akbar he said loud so that he will not go and do it and replace sayyidina ismail alayhi salam with the ram and sayyidina ismail alayhi salam said allahu akbar walillahi alhamd this is the background of this takbir we do farmaya ke allahu akbar allahu akbar la ilaha illa allah wallahu akbar allahu akbar walillahi alhamd sayyidina ismail alayhi salam has been replaced by a ram and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that you have shown that your dream was true and you have you have got success in this test tell me if allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would have made this compulsory for us to slaughter our son every year could he do it he could he is almighty but shouldn't we make shukr to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that today even to make this sunnat of sayyidina ibrahim alayhi salam we have to think we have to go in so many arguments and think confusions but what is the message we get the message is today sayyidina ibrahim alayhi salam all the religions you see in this dunya at present most of them go back to sayyidina ibrahim alayhi salam allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made him abul anbiya allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made him abul arab until now sayyidina ibrahim alayhi salam in every religion every faith every sharia sayyidina ibrahim alayhi salam is very important to us sayyidina ismail alayhi salam because in sayyidina ismail alayhi salam progeny there is no nabi only one nabi that is prophet muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam and hazrat ishaq alayhi salam progeny there are 24000 anbiya came but this one nabi is so heavy until now that his shariat is being accepted his shariat is being researched is still it is not done completely still the research is on so what we should do we should get the lesson we should get the lesson that all these nations which are from the family of sayyidina ibrahim alayhi salam we should live in this world together how can we live together think of a family don't we have any brother of ours he has gone off track for any reason do we leave him do we kill him if we try to bring him back that's how we should live may it be any religion we should have love for them let me tell you never retaliation never brings love love attracts the love if we show if we believe in sayyidina ibrahim alayhi salam we should announce today that inna salati wa nusuki wa mahyaya wa mamati lillahi rabbil alamin that is our ilan 
that is our resolution everything we do that is for allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the riza of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so this is the sunnah of sayyidina ibrahim alayhi salam we should follow and we should get ready now for the salatul eid